here. Hello, hello everybody. We are back. I see, I see people are here. Hello, David. Hello, Rahul Nilay. Nice to see you today. Uh, how's the Twitch chat doing? Hi. The Twitch chat is not doing today yet. Okay, we got someone in Twitch. There's one guy saying hi. 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 Ho, oh, Mr. Pano. Yes. Yeah, we are impatiently waiting for the new Soprano movie here. The, there's a movie coming out about with the with the son of Tony Soprano. Ah, okay. I even, I didn't even know that. Yes. Facts. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Iri. Kiro and great. Looks like it's working on. Looks like it's working Google. everywhere. That's yeah. Fun. Yeah. So here we are going to be seeing some more uh, games in the Maroxi today and mm -hmm. coincidence okay. or not it's again the line with my g4 <laughs> yay yeah. yeah i like that like, i know you like that a it's lot it's, i'm i'm not so keen on it it's fine i think i think it depends a lot on the um, on the player it's, and on your style yeah whatever yeah. you prefer more uh the Ben Larsen variation, like you said, he played it a lot. Uh, the yeah, and I think he was played a lot in like the seventies and eighties, and he did play like, them. Used to play a lot, right? He did play the Maroxi a lot. He has many, many games, of course, with Knight G four. He also has many games with the normal line. I actually have one of his games in the annotations to this game that we have here. Yeah, we do read the YouTube chat. Uh, we do read the Twitch chat as well. Um from time to time <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, are no, we are trying to focus a little bit on the chess as well and what i wanted to show you today is actually the domination of the good knight versus the bad bishop in the maroxi and i just want to say to uh Irikiro that the first one is available on on youtube probably also twitch the first mm. uh of, of this uh, series so you can go watch that afterward if you want to yeah we saw a game of petrosian last week uh, and we saw how to switch between the plans with queen b6, queen b4, go back to d8, then search for another plan. It's a very good game of Petrosian. And this one is somewhat similar to, to some point we have the same game. And uh, since we are looking at the knight g4, since we are looking at the knight g4 line, I also included some ideas here. Uh, are you planning to play any over the board tournaments? Yes, I'm actually going to play in Benasque, hopefully, <laughs> in, uh, and in July. And I'm planning one in, in Serbia also in July. You are playing in Serbia? I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, because they have they have so many tournaments. So actually, I was looking at three different ones. So I could play one in the end of June and then one in the beginning of June, July and one in the middle of July. So I'm, I'm planning to make like a whole little tour there. Mm, nice. It's very nice. So it is going to be hopefully a, a good summer tournament wise. Shall we start? Yeah. Uh, yes. By the way, so. this is a game between Damlianovic and Velimirovic. Velimirovic is another specialist of the Maroxi. Uh, he also mm. has many, many, many games. Him and Petrusson, he's another specialist that you will find uh so if you are logged in you can see all the uh yeah i'm logged in but this should i see this from white from black's perspective or... today oh, okay i'm just gonna uh here flipboard i got it oh so knight f3 is the first move here yes knight f3 oh you can get into the maroxi from a number of openings you can get from the yeah. english um even the some lines of the king's indian uh, knight f3 first, here you have the symmetrical English, which now goes into a Maroxi, knight c6. Yeah. e4 and bishop g7. Um, bishop e3, yeah, we saw the differences between the lines a little bit last week. We looked at what happens if you start with knight f6. The difference here is mainly that you can go for this line with knight takes d4, that you don't have in, in the other move order. And this is the Gurgenidze line, where you quickly trade on d4 and play bishop g7. We're going to mm. see more about this at some point as well. 
see some some games here. Um, and bishop g7 is the other move order. Bishop g7 basically forces white to play bishop e3 because knight c2 uh, in this moment is a little bit early and we're going to see some ideas in this line as well. Not yet though, but we are going to get there. And I know Sophie is eager to get there because she, she has seen some games and she likes them. <laughs> yeah. So let's focus on bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3, and here the, the classical line would be with d6, bishop e2, castle, and so on. But the line that Velimirovic played in this game, and the one that we also saw last week, is knight g4, the Bent Larsen variation, as Sophie yeah. told us. Queen takes, knight takes d4, and here white's move is queen d1. Because if the queen stays here, well, first of all, we are threatening a, a big check here, but d5 is another threat. So the queen, mm. so queen shouldn't st spend too much time on g4. Queen d1. And now we have options. We just mentioned them last week, but since it's the second game uh, we see with knight g4, let's look a little bit at this line as well with e5. Oh yeah, was that what you had been trying uh, like a single time in, yeah. in practice and thought was a little bit annoying? Because I actually didn't really, I've, I've only seen the, the knight e6 move. So uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what, what the plan is here. e5 is it's also like... possible. And basically you want to have the knight on d4 for as long as possible. And white yeah. will usually develop like this, bishop d3. I have to say that bishop d4 is also possible here. Uh, it gives up this bishop, but on the other hand, our bishop on g7 is not as great either. And the knight on d5 is no. a little bit annoying. So here white yeah. has or something like this. d6 is another option here. Slightly better for white as usual, but not much, I think. Yeah. We would play uh, bishop to e6, rook c8, queen d7. We have the bishop pair, but it's not a great position for the bishops. No, we probably have to take the knight at some point, right? I think so. I think at some point bishop d5 will be necessary. And then mm. we go into a middle game with opposite color bishops. Yeah. So this is an option for white here. And then bishop d3 is the main, main move. And here we castle. And b6 was played in this game that we are following, a game by Eduard Romain with the black pieces. You can also play d6, uh, that's okay, but uh, at some point you will also play... Uh, I think d6 and b6 are coming sooner or later. Mm. So here knight e2, no? and they, they are already challenging our knight, and knight e6. So this is the plan. Now the bishop comes here to b7. Which is, by the way, possible in other lines. This plan with b6 and bishop b7. I don't know if you've seen it before, but even in the lines with knight e6, it can be played. I think Larson... I think I've seen it. I think I've seen it, yeah. Larson, but I also some lines, uh, in some lines it can even... But that's probably in only when you've taken on c3 that you put it on, on a6. Uh, but that's only if, if, if C4 is uh, weaker than it is now. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I understand what you mean. But what I mean is that there are actually lines where you play... With the bishop on G7, there are lines where you do this. Uh, and you can develop okay, yeah. this way. And here, uh, something like this with F5. Okay. I like the F5 uh... <laughs> idea. Yeah, but this is yeah, not, yeah. it's not much. Uh, you're not going too far. And here white plays c5, which seems mm -hmm. to be... Sorry? No, I was just thinking if if f4 would have been a, uh, an idea. f4 right now. I yeah. think so, but bishop f2. Yeah, I was just thinking then maybe trying to push for g5 and g4. Possibly, mm. maybe. Possibly. If it's a little it. bit like a King's Indian almost. A little bit, yeah. Reminds a little bit of the King's Indian. Yeah. 
the bishop on g7 is really sad, but you want g5 and g4. You still have uh, to prepare it, right? King h8. Yes. Um, yeah. And the queen will eventually go to f6. And the problem that you have here with black is this pawn on the d file mm. at some point. So yeah, you have something on the king side, but you also need to take care of the pawn on d7. Yeah. So it's it's Stay double edged. Patient. Yeah, it's double edged. It's for sure this is the idea here. Like here, white probably needs to play knight c3 and come back oh, yeah, to d5. Yeah. But okay, this move also gives you d4. No, you can also go back to d4. It's a complicated yeah. position. For sure, you can try f4 now if you want. If you want to keep the tension, you can put the knight back on d4. These are the positions that you get here. But c5 is not so good. Here, black plays f4. Ah, what's the idea of c5? If, if black takes, this is not a free pawn, white plays bishop c4. When you go out, b4 is coming. And then queen takes d7. So there's, yeah. there isn't a lot of stability after the pawn on d7 disappears. No, that's uh, uh, important, an important point in the... <laughs> Um, position. I think knight e6, queen d7 is almost. What do we play here to defend everything? Bishop c8 looks like almost only move. Yeah. Bishop c8 and knight d8, but none of them look really tempting. <laughs> so th this is probably what white was. Maybe you. No, but I don't think that works. I was thinking looking at. No, rook c8, he just takes an e6, takes on so e6, that doesn't work yeah. either, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And defends yeah. everything. No, this is why white played c5, probably. He was trying to achieve this. But black plays f4 now. And here bishop c4 was... was the big mistake. Maybe black, white was uh, expecting something like this. Queen takes d7 when both the knight and the bishop are attacked. Although even here, we have to play bishop c8, but here it's a piece up. So, okay, <laughs> we're going to have to play bishop c8 and, and keep the extra piece. So uh, maybe queen c6. Yes. Yeah. Maybe there is some pressure, but I don't think it should be enough for white. On rook b8, rook d6, it's definitely some pressure there. Yeah. Something like this is probably what White was trying to get. But we don't have. I mean, to... it's uncomfortable uh, for sure. But if we can somehow avoid get out fight? of it or sacrifice <laughs> peace back, then yeah, that would be good. So what do we play here then? After Bishop C4. So we're not taking an E3. We're playing something better. Uh, better. So maybe rook d8 is an idea. So if he takes an e6, then we take back and threaten the queen and the bishop. So if we play rook d8, uh, then in, then white, but then white would maybe just, I was thinking about something like this. Mm. Uh, then white would have to move this bishop. Mm. But maybe it's maybe that's okay. What else do you have um, besides from? I could try to get out of the pin, moving the king. Um, but it doesn't really. Okay, wait a minute. What else do we have here? What else uh, do we have here, guys? What do we play here with black? 
Is it tactical? It sounds like it's almost tactical. Well, there's a bishop that's hanging there on e3, so of course, if we can win that... Yeah, first... yeah, yeah, no, but it's just... Uh, if we can't take it right now, if that's what was wrong, then we have to make another threat. Hmm. And the bishop only has Sorry. two to go to, can we use that somehow? Uh, threats? Active can moves? This? Active moves in this position? <laughs> Why not take on e3 and then after queen d7 play king h8? Uh, because we are going to lose one of the pieces. Uh, the, the bishop on is the bishop on b7 or the knight on e6. Can we play like this? But it doesn't. Then he gets to take here, and it's with check. And then we take back. Move the bishop. I think I'm gonna see if uh, if the chat has anything. No, we don't. Uh, we don't have many suggestions here. Rook f8 to f7 no. is a suggestion, but yeah, rook f7 probably just bishop f2 to anything that's not creating a threat or taking the bishop. I don't see anything else. I keep on moving the knight on e6, but that's very illegal. So. It's, very, it's very illegal, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's not just it's illegal, it's very. Okay, Einstein sees very close b5. That's a. But I was looking a little bit at b5, but again, b5, uh, like, okay, he takes and. But we can't really avoid him of taking on, on e6. So I would like to there. then, when I take back, have both the bishop on e3 be a problem and something else be a problem. Um, I was look, yeah. Okay, now now we have it. So not d not b5 because that's a, that's not where the problem is. The it problem is, is the problem is on d7. I right? can. <laughs> no. That's where five the... seems to work. I was just YouTube also a few people walk the rules is d5. Okay, I... I'm I'm gonna because I was just being like, oh, no, that wouldn't work. Um, I, my, it it says my connection is unstable, so I don't know. Yeah, you broke How? for a few seconds, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. But okay. Uh, why? I just feel like white has so many options. Like, what if he takes? If he takes, uh... well, but then you just want a bishop, because it comes with tempo and nothing is hanging anymore. Sorry, I was just going to play this. Oh, no. This is yeah, the point. Okay. And that's yeah, an extra okay. bishop. And if he takes with the pawn, he will take and he can threaten the queen. Hmm. Sorry. Ah, if he takes yeah, here on d five. Okay. That's what you mean, and right? And then we can take on e3 now, now yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. And then take on c5. Yeah. And then we have better pieces than in the other line. And, and more pieces. And more pieces, which is more, more important. Pieces. More importantly, <laughs> more pieces. Yeah, that's true. More importantly, more pieces. Yeah. Yeah, d5 here. There are still some uh, tricks here to, to see. c6. Because he takes b7, uh, comes with with tempo. But he takes here. And now we have this move, rook d8. Yeah. Queen c2, pawn takes e3. Queen c4, this pawn is threatening here on b7. It looks dangerous, but it's it's under control. Rook takes d8. And here he play. <laughs> he played a very nice move. Of course, you can take with the rook. Seems simple, but knight d eight is a, was a very nice touch. Ah, uh, okay. Because the queen, the other queen is yeah, hanging on c four. <laughs> yeah. So it even if he goes down and make a new queen, we just take on c four, and it's still a piece. Up. It's still a piece up. Yeah. yeah. It's still a piece up. 
And if queen takes f7, it's knight f7. Yeah. And the pawn is not going anywhere. Okay, no. so this is this was one game that yeah. we have here. Well, so this was uh, aside like this. This was uh, a game in the analysis. This was a game in the analysis. Yes, this is not our main game. Okay. I was just showing okay. you some other okay. ideas. Here. Yeah. No, 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 no. Now we're going back to our game. <laughs> Such good moves. Oh. They definitely got <laughs> engine in lipstick. I'm not sure they use lipstick. <laughs> I don't think they use lipstick. I don't think either one of them, not Spielman and not uh, Romain. I don't think, I have never seen them wearing this lipstick. <laughs> Maybe they had it hidden someplace else, yeah. in the water somewhere. Yeah. 96, and here queen d2. Just to show you some other ideas here. Um, rook c1, let's say, this is a game played by Larsen. Queen okay. a5. And this is the the move that I was telling you about, b6. And the idea of getting the bishop out okay, via yeah. b7. In the same line with knight e6. Castles and bishop b7. Mm. And this is the idea in this line to play g5 and take control of the dark squares. The queen goes to e5, h5, h4. And you're not castling here anymore. Like this. No, it takes some. Um, <laughs> it some takes courage, Larson, I think, Larson to play this. This position. Yeah. Rook fd1 and d6. Yeah. Yeah, and this is another. I find that it's position. a theme. Sorry. Uh, that the queen, the black queen, she often, you have to make some sort of decision with, with her before you play those moves, before you play b6 and d6. You often have to go queen a5 to get her activated before you like close, uh, close, close it down with d6 and, and b6. Yes, if you play this line, yeah, <laughs> you have to yeah. uh, make sure that your queen doesn't get trapped there. Yeah. No, in this in this line the queen goes to e5. Yeah. Knight e5, there's a threat of knight c7 here. Mm. So Larson goes king of eight in this game. Bishop f1. And here there's a very nice play from Larson because he wants to play queen b2 here. This would be a good move, but if you go queen b2, then rook c2 will, will come. So you just have to come back, for example. Yeah. Because queen takes a3. I think something keeps happening with your connection. I just see that the video keeps going. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm, it's I'm a, not uh, sure what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I Maybe think the, now the it's back. Is, yeah. Okay. Now it's back, I think. Yeah. But I can hear you perfectly. So that's, that's good. <laughs> something. And what do we play here? I mean, what does white play here? Why doesn't this work? Queen a3 is a big blunder. Rook a2 looks like it's just trapping the queen very quickly. Maybe rook... I, queen... Um, queen b3 still. Or rook a2. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking that we could somehow trap her after that, but maybe we can't. Um, then how do we try? Okay, we could go. So if it's b3, could we then play rook b1 first? And prepare it? Or can she go, I think? Then maybe she can go to a4. a4. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there's something very direct here. Okay, something more direct than trying to, to get Well, rook b1 is not very direct, that's what I mean. <laughs> the pawn on d5? Pardon? Is it the pawn on g5 we're going for? Uh, I 
don't think we want that pawn and give up that bishop. Takes, takes. Takes on d5. I don't think it's a good idea. Oh, we take on e7, of course. We take on e7, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We take on e7. Yeah. And that's game over. If king takes, then queen d6. And queen d7. So yeah. queen b2 doesn't work very very well here, so he goes bishop c6. It's a very nice idea that once queen b2, but after bishop a4. So first he wants bishop a4, and then when the rook goes away, then queen b2. And that looks good for black. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Queen d3. And now he, he gets the square f4. Once the queen leaves the diagonal, he plays knight f4. Takes, takes. Here, maybe bishop f2, but then h3 is coming, probably. He plays bishop d4, and now takes. Rook d4. And here, plays a very nice move, rook h5. <coughs> To activate the rook and uh, control the fifth rank. Yeah. Takes, takes here and b5. Plays e5, trying to get the pawn on f4, now h3. Takes here, rook c8, looking at the c5 pawn, and now he gets a big advantage after bishop d5. Well, big advantage. A pawn. <laughs> well, <laughs> not even a pawn. It's just the pawn on e6 is uh, is falling soon. It's not yet a pawn, but it will be a pawn. And the past yeah. pawn on the queen side. He eventually won this game. It was a long game. Uh, if you want to check it out, this is Short Larsen, played in 1987 in Brussels. But let's go back. Oh, Sorry? It's always good to see <laughs> Nigel Short lose some games. <laughs> Sorry, I just... <laughs> it's just like I said, Larson. Yeah, so let's go back to... I mean, I, I love him, but he's a little, uh, like, I don't know, with the things you sometimes say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, here, Queen D2 is our game, and Velimirovic goes D6. Rook c1 and bishop d7, exactly like in our uh, game last week, f3. What do we play here, Sophie? Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just going to go see if I can remember this. Um, Hi, Juan David. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice to see you. Um, maybe you can remember this. <laughs> Okay, so this has to be very logical, Sophie. You're not. You yeah, don't I have feel to. Like it's something on that on, on this uh, on the on the diagonal that's just being weakened. Um... What, what's your idea here with black? What is it that you want? What's our setup? I mean, instead of we're gonna get this uh, queen out and we're gonna go in the C file with the rook. Um, we also want the knight here, perhaps, is it a5? We want the knight on c5, yes. Yeah. So do we want to play a5 first to, so uh, to b4? We play a5 first, but one okay. thing your queen, uh, the, in the ideas that we saw, the queen was not going to a5. That can be done no. in other lines. The queen was going to b6, and the rook that goes to c8 yeah. is usually the one on f8. Remember the tricks on e7 yeah. that you want to avoid. Oh, yeah, yeah, now I, yeah, that's true. I got to review the, the video uh, we did last week. <laughs> I'm going to send you the PGN. 
So you you have yeah. the game. <laughs> Great. So a5, we start with a5 so that we don't get b4 when we play knight c5. Yeah. Here now he goes bishop c6. You can play uh, this in either move order and knight c5. Rook d1. What now? What is wrong with e5? e5? I'm not sure when e5, because I think black can take on e5 with the bishop. What do we do? I mean, I want to play. Uh, yes. Queen b6 to make room for the rook on, on c8. I was just trying to remember the line with the. Um, when it is that, but that's not yet. I was just trying to remember where what line it was where white could sometimes take on e7. Oh. But that's only after we play rook with rook to c8. Uh, that's only that when the queen gets on the same diagonal as the white queen too early. Um, okay. Okay, now we have a pawn on a5, but let's say... Let's say that here we go queen a5. Just... Oh yeah, then it's when they can play knight d5. And... One day, yes, because uh -huh. here you, you, you take on d2 with check. So here it would be castle. And let's say, for the sake of our line, that we go here a6. And now... At this point, uh, uh, what you say? Refresh the board. Yeah, yeah, like this. So like this, no? Something like this. And then they can go here. Yeah, but here this is not exactly a, a perfect situation because B two is hanging in the end. But this would this is what you're trying to remember. Yeah. Okay, moves away in here, but this is not an ideal situation for White because B two is hanging. So it would be with the pawn on B three. But, but I remember that the idea, yeah. Basically, this is the idea that you want to avoid. And in the line with a5, once you get what you also remember, queen b6, here, um, what you remember is this idea that we looked at, rook c2, with the idea of rook b1. And here you remember that queen b4, this is what you remember, knight d5. Yeah. When queen takes d2 doesn't work because of knight e7. This is what we saw. Oh, can you see the position? Sorry. I can see it now. Yeah, it's taking on. on... Yeah. Knight e7. Yeah. This is what we looked at. Uh, I showed you last week. And basically here we have to take on d5. Mm. But worse things can happen and you can lose a pawn after knight d5. This is not the worst, no? It's just... Uh, a position where knight d5 is also working because the rook is not on c8. So here knight b5. Up to here we have the same game as last week. Rook f to c8 is also what Petrosian played. And here bishop f1 was our game Keres Petrosian. And here white plays queen e1. Which is a dubious move. And I'm going to show you why. Takes, takes. And now, I just, uh, can you one move? Uh, after just after queen e one. Yeah. Um, no, nothing. I was just uh, just because there's something sometimes in uh, with the bishop that's hanging with check on e three, but you can't really move the knight anywhere, so it doesn't. No, I'm going to give you some time to think here. Yeah. Because I think yeah, you remember okay. something. But not, uh, not exactly. So I'm going to give you some time to think here. What do we play with black? It's not black to play and win. Don't think about, I'm, I, I make a move and I'm winning. I make a move and I equalize and I'm a little better positionally. <laughs> okay. That's still something, right? <laughs> it's <so> good. <laughs> of course. Yeah, into that. Okay. Um, okay. So okay, I'm 
just gonna who knows what we can do here let's see if anybody knows here? this idea <laughs> i know that there's one idea about doing ah, right. like this yeah there is one you're right but maybe it's too slow i don't know if it's slow but maybe there's something quicker that's exactly yeah that's the thing that that's okay if you didn't have the move that well actually queen d8 hold on queen d8 is not okay in this position you lose the knight oh no because he takes on c5 yeah no he doesn't take this. oh yeah he takes yeah, on he c5 does. twice yeah um uh, okay um so that's good to, <laughs> to know what else do we have okay landra knows the trick or he found it is it a trick okay because I was looking a little bit of, at this, but I don't think it works because he could even take with the. No. No, no, yeah. This is because there are some themes. Then, if you take the queen, that we take, but I think it's losing material in two different ways. In both, lines, yeah. at least. <laughs> In That's two ways. Good yeah. enough. Like, okay. I would have to really uh, mess it up. Um. We play. No, we definitely can't. I, th I keep f thinking it's a problem with this pin on the knight. I'm going to look, see what. There's a problem Unless with the long diagonal. This move, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's the move that yeah. we have. Um, yeah, no need to play queen d8 and queen f8. You can just play it directly. No, there are. this is what I wanted to remind you, because I think we have seen this briefly before, but the bishop h6 idea is always there, especially when the queen goes to e1. And... There are these ideas against the king on g1. This is why you'll see that white many times plays simply king h1. This is a move that you will see. Oh, not here. Sorry, uh, I meant here. This is a move that you will see many times. Simply king h1 to get out of the diagonal. So in this position, no, here, just king h1. Many times in the Maroxi, white plays this move, this prophylactic move, just in case. So here on queen e1, you have takes, takes, and bishop h6. And the point, of course, is this, knight e3, wins the queen. Oh. We're not winning, as I was saying, because white de defends bishop f1, but you've just traded the, the dark square bishop, and you are getting into that endgame that we wanted with a good knight versus a bad bishop. So what do we play next here? What would be your next move? Well, then knight d7 would be... Trade queens, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. This is our next step. We want to trade queens. Usually when black gets to trade queens, he is already headed to an equal or slightly better position. White usually tries mm. to avoid the trade of queens, and here you can do that with knight d7. But Velomirovic... Yeah, he he plays knight a4. It's yeah. prettier. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's prettier. Uh, I don't think there's a big difference between the two. White would probably have to take anyway. Knight a4 is also more active. Yeah, I think so. So takes here, knight b6. And here white plays a4, um, which looks a little bad because it weakens the pawn on b3. But on the other hand, he was just probably worried about the break a4 which is uh, mm. going to happen sooner or later from Black's from Black's side. So he plays here and King F8. Yeah. Simply bring the pieces. King E8 all the way to D7. And we don't have to worry about E5, never, because we take on C1 and White loses the pawn on E5. Yeah. So this is not really a threat No. at any point. White plays bishop d3 and now e6. This is another common plan once you are in the endgame. Play e6 with the idea of d5 to create a passed pawn. It's a little um, uh, opposite of what you're told uh, with <laughs> placing the pawns on, on the same color as white's bishop, but but even with the pawn on d5, the bishop is still very much. It, yeah, so it's because it's controlled. it's still it's still a pass pretty passive bishop, where it's it's not. 
really going to bother the pawns even though they're no no even if even if the pawn disappears from e4 the bishop is still bad because it hits against the pawn on g6 and the pawn on h7 and there's no bishop e4 or bishop c4 in the future plays here no. and now d5 if white takes we can take back with the pawn put the king on d6 or something let's say here and rook e1 i was thinking for white but just king d6 mm. and then the knight can maybe go to d7 and c5 or something maybe even e5 definitely yeah, yeah. And look at the pawn on b3 and king c5 mm. king b4 is always there at some point you have to be careful with the checks but it's definitely an idea yeah. and bringing the knight to c5 is the other one of course slowly but it's it's a lot of pressure mm. so white plays e5 here what would you do here with black Hearing I would this, really uh, sorry. <laughs> focus on my knight, uh, like something yeah. needs to happen with, with that right now. Hmm. And so I either, I think either I should move the king. Okay. Uh, if I get the knight via d7 to c5 or, or I mean, <laughs> if mm -hmm. like, like e5. Um, the other thing that I'm looking at that I haven't calculated, but is to go d4 to get the knight in the uh, um, d5. But I'm a little worried if we play if we play d4 that that maybe White can play something like bishop c4 or e4. No, the bishop comes uh, to life. Yeah, a bishop here. Yeah, exactly. So if the point is to get the knight to d5 and say that it's better than the bishop, then it doesn't work if white can just capture it once it lands on d5. I agree, yeah. D4, D4 you don't want to play it yet, I think. Yeah. Not yet. I don't know if there are any other ways we could activate the knight. No, um, I, I think your idea is, uh, is very good. Moving the king and then going to d7. Yeah, uh, you can play king d7 yeah. and king d8 is probably even better because you keep the rook on c8 protected Yeah. more than once. Sense. Here in knight d7, very nice idea. You have to improve all your pieces, and this knight is now maybe going to c5, depending on how white plays. And here white yeah. makes another inaccuracy, rook takes c8, because this simply gives up the file. The thing is that here white won't be able to play rook c1, and you're going to see the oh. difference uh, here. If he plays rook c1, you take, and now you can bring the king. So the king makes it here first, king c5, and white will simply lose after d4 and king b4. Yeah. But, okay, you can say, well, but won't black simply take on c1 and then uh, replace the rook? No, it's not the same. Let's say that white makes a useful move, like h4. h4 is a useful move because h5 might happen at some point. So mm. here, if we take on c1, it's not the same. You have the file and on rook c1, rook c8, the difference is that the king is closer to the center. Yeah. So white takes, king c3. And he makes it. Yeah. Yeah. He makes yes, it to play. Yes, time to play. Yeah. Exactly, okay. yeah. So this here, I think that white is even pressing a little bit. I don't think he's worse anymore. King, maybe knight c5, bishop c2. And now there are ideas with both h5 and f5. With f5, because there's a knight on c5 and king d4 is there. Yeah. For example, now if we let's say that we play h5 to stop h5, then f5 is pretty strong. Is what about b4? Would that be strong as well? Sorry? Would b4 uh, work yeah. as well? Yeah, b4 would work as well, I think, here. Yeah. So you create a passed pawn on the queen side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is okay. also good. 
Uh, this was just an additional idea that we have here because on G takes this one falls on H5. Mm. No, so now we're not in control anymore with black. No. So it's important to pay attention to how you exchange. Yes. The book. It's not just yeah. trade everything and it's a draw, no. <laughs> and here you'll see that black keeps the file for the rest of the game. Okay. He plays bishop c2 and now the king gets in. King to b6. Okay. There you go. And here there's no f5. He tries rook f3, maybe rook h3. And h5. Mm. This is a typical setup in the endgame, no? especially rook endgames. You, you want only one weakness, the, the one on f7, that can be easily uh, defended if needed. Yeah, and it's it's even it doesn't even look like it's needed. No, no, I don't think it's needed, but as but it's a, nice to have yeah yeah as a general idea. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, electric horse. <laughs> yeah. Good Hi. to see you. Yeah, I love uh, Sophie's flowery background as well. She's in Sweden. Yes, I just she's changing uh, location all the time. <laughs> yeah. So this time it's in Sweden. This it's, time it's uh, in Sweden, yeah. Very nice background they have here. <laughs> in Sweden. In Sweden. So he plays G3. <laughs> yeah. What would you do now? Electric horse. I like this new nickname, actually. <laughs> I prefer eccentric. Horse, you prefer but I, eccentric. I, I, I thought eccentric was, uh, was nice. But electric is also fine. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we should. Oh, we should definitely not play King C5. No, <laughs> was that the that's trap? one way. And maybe the only way to lose this position. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. But it's a nice idea, but it's not working at all. Yeah. Um, so maybe we could. Okay. That's really the only way I can see right now that we can activate the, the king. The knight still could be, I mean, knight C5. Um, but it's just that it's kind of blocking the <laughs> the king and the book when it's on c5, so I don't want it to be permanently placed on c5. Mm. Mm. I mean, okay, king but, c5... but yeah, are you giving up on your idea so easily? Like, king c5 is definitely what you want to no, play. No, that's why I'm, thinking. I'm like, uh, should I give up the the line or should I play um I was just it's nothing about this should I play this move now yeah to get in here without having to face rook c rook c3 no yeah it's just, just because it's a little uh like uh worrying if hmm. ah that you give... I don't know if it's wrong I was worried that maybe white could start attacking it I know the king is still protecting but then we couldn't go to uh to to be four but okay it looks like it's pretty cramped for yeah. white so it's probably good and then maybe the king could go to to d5 instead and then getting the knight in on c5 let's see so d4 yeah you want to get the knight in and david also had it d4 here oh, let's see here you have a great position i think any move <laughs> Uh, that's not king c5 will probably keep that advantage but if you want to keep pushing probably you have to go for this uh, you have to find a plan not just a move here he plays bishop d1 but here you are worrying about rook d3 just king c5 on rook d3 yeah it's because my plan was to go all the way to b4 mm. yeah. um, with the king but then okay we could maybe just change plans and go to d5 instead uh, and then, or just stay know, on c5 no for now i'll just stay at c5 and see what white does that's basically the maximum you can get because king b4 okay the king is nice on b4 but the king is not threatening to take on b3 no never so it's just improving here to the maximum rook d3 what else can you do now i 
No, I could get the knight more active. Uh, the knight can go on b6 and d5. But I still don't want white to be able to take it. So maybe bishop f3 no, is something. I think that's still fine, no? Uh, knight b6 and knight d5 is definitely the idea here. You have to improve the knight. And if the bishop then takes on d5, the king gets in. No, king the D5, king gets in. king e4. Yeah, and then it's uh, we just have to win the Wukan king. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> There's a what happens on bishop e4 was a question here, right? Here bishop e4. No, nothing happens on bishop e4. I think you will uh, continue with your plan. We don't have king c5 because b7 is hanging. So I imagine something like rook c7 can be a, a move here. Can, did refresh. you play bishop e4? I'm going to refresh. There you go. Knight c5 is a move, but then I guess the point is that you don't get the king to c5, no? So I, I would just go rook c7 here slowly and get the king and play for the same plan. How is that? Do you want rook f1? Is this it? Maybe rook f1 here? No, but if whenever you play rook f1, the rook gets in. So that's not going to be yeah. an issue. No, and now I want I wanted to go rook c7 and here king c5 with the same plan, knight to d5. And return to something that's very similar to what happened in the game. Yeah. I, here black is just completely in control, so you have time to defend everything and improve. There's nothing that white can do, that's very important. F5, mm -hmm. F5 is never happening because E5 is hanging. And F5 is also hanging, but I mean, it's just yeah. really nothing there. You have, <laughs> you have options. Yeah, but maybe bishop E4 is more direct. Now, if bishop D1 simply gives black some moves you still get with the bishop on f3 it's just a slightly uh, worse version 95 okay and if a bishop takes e4 d5 you take mm. so what does white do now king e4 is coming no matter what yeah, it's almost one of those positions where you could get like a Zugzwang. I think it's almost a Zugzwang, yes. Because king e2, I, I have rook c2. So what do you play? After king e4, you will run out of moves and you'll have to allow rook c2. Yeah. You have a move here and I go here. What other move do you have? Now you don't have g4. I mean, king c, uh, rook c3, right? Uh, you mean with oh, oh yeah oh, oh okay of course rook c two if he goes to e one yeah yeah true. if he goes to e two maybe rook c three would also be yeah I was strong. thinking to give up the pawn and go for the other ones no yeah I, I thought because that it's going could... to take while for white king to get but the pawn on b five is quite far advanced I I wouldn't risk anything here oh no i would wait i would wait until white put the king on like a, uh on d1 not on d1 on on e2, e2. or uh, and rook c2. well if you want to be fancy and you really want to play something you're going to play here no <laughs> yeah okay if you want to be cool and you really want to trade those rooks yeah no, wait, rook d4. wait, rook d4? Did I just lose my pawn? No, I play king c3 and I'm winning, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I, I was almost still. too fancy. No, 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 no. I'm still winning here. Oh, but you got to be careful, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's safe to say that this is winning now. Yeah. No, my first idea was that here you simply play rook c7 and you wait for white to make a move. He'll run out of moves and yeah. the rook gets in. So this uh, is very easy to win this end game with bishop d5. So white almost have to uh, has to keep the bishop just to have a piece Something that can do. make some. 
Yeah. No, it's uh, because it will be more difficult to get in, maybe. Not, of course, not impossible, but the, the bishop does cover some squares. Yeah. So what do we do next? But I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do we break through here? Mm. Um, I'm thinking about if we can somehow, I mean, the rook is uh, blockading the pawn right now, if we could just uh, threaten it and then something push the pawn, but we have to be a little bit careful about b7, but I don't think it's Maybe there's a problem. Maybe it is. Maybe so if we play <laughs> b5, uh, he cannot, then he cannot play bishop b, uh, take on b7 because rook c7, then both the, the bishop and the rook is hanging. Yeah. So if at b4, he has to move the rook first. Yes. And, and then maybe we could just take it easy and play rook c2 right but where does i think that you have to see where the rook goes because rook d1 threatens rook c1 i'm not sure about that oh yeah okay but maybe, but maybe. then i was thinking if i could somehow push this pawn even further but it's i'm going to be careful about not losing it like pushing it all the way uh, and then not being able to help it um okay Maybe knight I can't really works, maybe. my king right now. My king has to stay protecting. Mm -hmm. D4, that's a little bit annoying. Maybe we could go for something like rook c7 to d7. And then moving the... Then we have three oh. pieces. Like, then we can go to c3 uh, and then the king can try to win some of these pawns. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm sure that that's an idea. Oh, why okay, don't you play rook? See. Why don't you play rook d8? Oh, because you want to have b7 defended. Okay. Uh, yeah, but okay, maybe rook d8 would be more. Direct. Yeah, yeah, but I understand you want the rook on d7. Makes sense. Yeah. And then knight c3 and king b4. Okay, that looks like a plan. That definitely looks like a plan. And you want to win b3, and I don't see how how I can stop it. Okay, then there's another plan with going, trying to make something of, of the H file, maybe hmm. pushing uh, H4 first. That's what he played. I don't think I do. but then we take X move. Okay, white plays something. And yeah. then, uh, <laughs> and then. Sophie, I'm losing you. Try to get in. Are you losing me? I just now, made now such a back. nice little uh, <laughs> Can you repeat plan? that, please? <laughs> Can you did repeat you, that? Did you hear my plan? I heard about H4, but then you were breaking. So if you could repeat that, I think it's it's best. Ah, okay, you can see on my on my arrows. But yes, I can. Uh, like uh, opening up the H file and then just try it via the H file instead of uh, the C file because the king is now kind of stuck on, on c5, which is okay, but I don't think the book is going to get active that way right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what he played, uh, pawn to I... h4. Okay. Pawn to h4 is what- I'm sorry played. about my connection <laughs> you right now. Um, I really like this plan with h4, but I think yours is also, I mean, both are yours, but the first one that you found must also be winning. The reason why I like h4 so much is because it's playing for this uh, two, uh, two weaknesses principle. Yeah. Here you can yeah. see that white is stuck, he's very passive. Uh, we already have one weakness on, on the queen side, b3 and then the pawn on d4, but we need a second front of attack, so h4 does exactly that. And your white won't be able to defend everything. And the position should crumble really, really fast after that. After h4. Plays rook d2. Yeah. 
Sophie? Uh, can you hear me? Now, I just now, can't can see the move after h4. Uh, you can't see the move after h4, rook d2. Okay. Have you played it? Yes, I have. Rook d2, pawn to hg3. Can you refresh? Uh, I have. <laughs> I think I think your connection is uh okay. Just right now. Oh I I can I think I'm there now. So why just took back on G three? Yeah, and rook h eight. Okay. So now he wants uh rook to h three, right? Mm, yeah. The question is how does white okay. stop it? He played bishop g two just to avoid rook h3 but this is a nice trick i thought it's nice to show it rook h3 and now if rook g2 what do we have we take f4 yeah. we take on f4 yeah this one's falling yeah and on any check on c2 you always can cover with the knight so knight c3 is there rook c2 knight c3 is fine so he plays here and now a very strong move again, b6. This move is simply unpinning the knight. Because now you couldn't go anywhere because you always lose b7. You had this problem before. Yeah. So just b6. And now the knight can move. And when the knight moves, it's over. Knight e3. Yeah. And the rook gets in. And there's no defending. No, not defending anything now, it just crumbles. He takes everything. Knight d5, going after f4. Now going after b3. <laughs> and the king is not getting in. Oh, very, no. very nice. Nothing, nothing for white to attack either. It's just... We don't care about the knight. G2 is coming. No. King f2 and king c3, game over. Yeah. He's losing everything. Very nice game. And here you, you really see how bad the bishop is. Um, and we have this structure with the pawn on b5 that we were discussing. No, I remember I told you that the bishop is really bad if we can get uh, a position with e6, which is what black eventually did. A position with e6 and the bishop cannot That's go when to I c4. even think it's the... Yeah. Can you repeat that? Uh, sorry, there's some lagging, but I will. It's almost refreshing to see some end games after all our uh, <laughs> king hunts. Okay. It's nice to just nice <laughs> weekends. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. Now oh, this this end game is really nice. The bishop is not doing anything, and it's only it's not only his own pawns no it's our structure that limits the bishop so well okay i think i'm losing you again i don't know what's happening maybe the end games are not uh okay, something sweden likes very much i can hear you. <laughs> because no, no, you're no right. maybe not but i can hear you so uh, yeah good Okay, yeah. we're going to see some more. Uh, we're going to see uh, little by little. So we saw the plans with queen d8, some of it. Now we saw playing with the good knight versus the bad bishop. And I'm going to find another good example for next week. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And thank you, everybody. I think I'm losing Sophie. So I'm just going to say goodbye to all of you and hope to see you next In my next week on th on tuesday uh probably at the same hour <laughs> thank you